Hi, I'm Tara, and welcome to Let's Do Books. You can email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with any questions or comments, or come join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club. I'm joined today by pop culture critic and managing editor of the Bella Books blog, Dana Piccoli. I'm particularly excited to talk to her today because she's also an author whose first book, Savor the Moment, was recently released everywhere by Bella. Welcome, Dana. Thanks so much for having me. So you are here today to talk about your journey as a lesbic reader. Where did that begin? You know, I think it all began in fanfic, which I think a lot of people's journeys start in fanfic. <laughs> I really, I'd say it wasn't until about 2011 that it even, that I even knew any of this existed. And I got really into a, a couple television shows and I started reading fanfic based on those shows. And then somebody told me I should check out, and I might get the name of this wrong, but, and playing the role of herself. Yeah. Okay. So you're smiling. Okay. So I, I read that and I, and I had heard that it was based on fanfic and I, I just, I, I got really, really into it and I was like, oh my gosh, there's, there might be more out there than this. So I think I was... I think I was probably on Amazon and I was looking for lesbian books and I had already gone through all my Sarah Waters, you know, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it had never occurred to me that there was an entire world of lesfic out there. And I think I, I somehow stumbled upon Melissa Braden's Waiting in the Wings, which she had just written at that point. I think it was her debut. It was. And I was so interested because it was about theater. And that's my background. I have a degree in musical theater performance. And th th I had lived a life on the stage. And I was like, wow, OK, so the characters are queer. They're also actors. This might just be my cup of tea. And I read it and I loved it, loved it so much. I think I read it twice. And I figured after that, well, now that now that I've caught the bug, I got to check this out. And so I started doing more research and I, I looked up, you know, who, who are the who are the the big names in this in this industry? And of course, you know, I, I read Faded Love by Radcliffe and, um, you know, Jerry Hill. I read Keepers of the Cave. And then I also really love historical stuff because, you know, I'm like I'm, I'm a big historical fiction nerd. And so I think the first one I read was uh, The Farmer's Daughter by Robbie McCoy. And I loved that there were so many more stories other than Sarah Waters' Victorian, you know, and Edwardian <laughs> lesbian yeah, escapades. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I really got my start. And after that, I just, I couldn't stop. And it really, it became important to me as, as I fell in love with lesfic, I also started becoming a larger presence in the LGBTQ media. And I realized that no one was really covering lesfic. And so I made it a priority when I was at After Ellen back a few years ago that I wanted to do something called the Summer of Love. And so I assigned lesfic books to like something like 12 different writers. And we each wrote about a different lesfic book to try to kind of give it a little bit more of a boost because it was it's pretty rare to see like real authentic lesfic from lesfic publishers get the sort of attention and notoriety that it deserves. I mean, you'll see, you know, things from, you know, like Random House and things that are more commercial get a lot of praise. But I was like, there are thousands of books and hundreds of authors out there who are working hard and doing incredible things and they're not getting the attention they deserve. And I want to thank you, Tara, because you do so much to boost and support Lesfic you're always out there putting stuff together and 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 helping and pushing for authors and pushing books it's it's really incredible and i, I mean personally i want to thank you for that oh thank you it's uh i mean i've talked about this in various other podcasts but like it it changed my life lesfic was how i discovered my bisexuality and my first book was actually in playing the role of herself too so i was I really excited when you said that <laughs> I think it's the, it's the like uh what the entry drug for a lot of uh, a lot of it people. is like it is if it wasn't curious wine and you've discovered lesfic later it was in playing the role of herself. Yep. So what did it mean to you when you first found it when you realized there was this like enormous 
section of literature that you just didn't know existed. Well, I felt kind of foolish at first, but as I've as I've grown in in my industry, I also realized that one of the reasons that I didn't know about it is like as I just said, it just it doesn't get the sort of press and notoriety that it deserves. But um, once I, you know, once I knew about it and once it had come into my life, I I was so satisfied. You know what I mean? You spend all this time watching TV shows and movies and you get these these crumbs or you get a storyline or, or something just maybe doesn't go your way. And there's an awful lot of sadness. There's obviously the bury your gaze situation. And just recently somebody coined the phrase cancel your gaze, which has been happening a lot. So it's kind of like you're at the mercy of these, you know, studios that aren't necessarily thinking about your best interests as a queer person. That's not their number one priority, but that is the number one priority of lesbian writers. When I wrote my book, I knew, I absolutely knew, I am writing this for the people in my community. I am writing this for the people who have had their hearts broken by television shows. I wanted to give them something that would fill them with hope and give them a happy ending. And so many lesbian books have happy endings. And I think that that's something really beautiful about it, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what do you remember what you were reading when you started writing? I started writing this book like five years ago. Honestly, I I racked my brain about this. I don't know. I was reading a lot of Les Fick at the mm-hmm. time. So it could have been anybody. It could have been K.G. McGregor. It could have been Jerry Hill. It could have been all sorts of, uh, of, of folks. But I read really quickly, too. So I would, you know, knock out a book in a day or two. So gosh only knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So how do you feel about where we're at right now with Lesvik, the current state? I'm feeling really hopeful. I'm feeling really good. I think it's, I think Lesvik is, is kind of going into a new phase. I'm seeing a lot of really interesting new authors out there and I'm seeing a lot of community happening with lesbian authors so maybe authors who are more experienced lending their you know advice and mentoring and really working together to kind of expand what our definition of lesbian is and i think lesbian it's the, the the title itself obviously refers to lesbian but there are a lot of bisexual queer folks out there non-binary and and trans folks that want to see themselves represented in fiction too and I think that's incredibly important I know it was really important to me when I was writing Savor the Moment that I I really really wanted to make sure I had you know I, I wanted everyone in the community to at least find themselves in some character you know I have a trans man named Ryder in my book and I you know, I talk to my my trans male friends to get their thoughts and their advice as I really wanted him to be portrayed the best way possible. And I just I think that the future of Lesvik is is just more and more inclusion. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it's very exciting. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it, too, because I feel like even in the seven or so years that I've been reading it, I've been seeing it become a much more inclusive, much more welcoming space to all readers who want to read about women who love other women. Yes. And and it, it's just, it's reflective of our community. And that I think that it's really important that, that that's happening. And the more people that we can include in our world, the better. It's true. You're listening to The Lesbian Talk Show. The lesbiantalkshow.com, your hub of podcast information. So are there any books that you read recently that you're really excited about? I, you know, I kind of, I, I had to step away a little bit from Lesvik while I was in the final process of writing the book. And I know you've talked about this with many other authors. A lot of people, I can't, I couldn't read, read Lesvik while I was writing my own lesbian. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I think I was just kind of reading kind of random stuff, some mysteries I read, mostly like New York Times bestseller fiction stuff. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing profoundly lesbian. And I'm starting, I'm hoping to get back into reading because I've just been so nerved up about the book and everything. I just, I kind of, I kind of just stepped away from it a little bit. 
but I just bought a bunch of, of new books that are on my my e-reader that I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into. Um, one of Ray's books, actually, Seven... Seven. Oh, Lucky Seven. Yeah, Lucky Ray Seven. Dragon. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting into Lucky Seven. So, I haven't read that one, but she's very good. She also. Did you know that she has a lot of stuff in fanfic? Uh, we talked a little bit about fanfic stuff. So yes, I know that 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 she and I come from similar kind of origins. <laughs> That was how I first discovered her, reading her Mass Effect fanfic. So if your heart was broken like mine by the end of Mass Effect 3, go find some of her fanfic and it will heal your heart. Oh my gosh, I loved Mass Effect so much. So I will definitely check that out. She also did a pairing between, oh, now I'm going to forget both characters' names. This is great. Basically, she took two minor characters. So you know the one that runs the club? Yeah. Yeah, so her, and then the Asari that is on the council. Okay. And she puts them as a pairing and does this, like, long series where that happens, and they end up being, like, kind of poly and... But whatever, it's so... It's so good. Her stuff is so filthy, but so good. (laughs) Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Oh, anyway, sorry. I just had a moment. I don't get to. F- <laughs> I don't get to squee about Ray Magden's fanfic very often. So, well, I'm ha- I'm happy to check it out now. Is there anything else that you want to share about your journey as a reader? I think it's just made me a better writer. It's made me more empathetic. It's made me more hopeful. I think it's really easy to get your your heart broken by queer media. (laughs) I think we keep coming back. We keep we keep coming back. But there there's just so much out there. It's it's like a whole it's like a whole new world that so many people haven't experienced yet. And I've been working the last couple of years, especially with now with Bella. I really have been trying to introduce a new audience to Lesfic. And I think that, especially for like millennials, we really associate, and Gen Xers, we really associate romance, especially the romance part of the, that genre, with our parents, like our mothers. Our mothers read romance novels. They, they <laughs> bought the, the Jackie Collins at the grocery store. And so I think that breaking that thought process behind romance, like, like breaking down the wall, a barrier of romance will really open people up to a lot of lesbian romance that's so good and so satisfying. And it's just, it's really, it's really just made me a better person, I think, in general. Because I, when you get to see yourself reflected in in things, it heals a part of you that maybe has been hurt before or broken before. And so I'm really grateful that I was able to stumble upon all this. And I don't want other people to have to stumble upon it anymore. I want them to just know that it exists. And so I've been preaching the gospel of Flesvik for a couple of years now. And I'd like to think that it's worked. And I know that for many people who bought my book, this is their first Flesvik ever. And so that's really exciting to me. And I, I, I think it's just made me, being a reader has made me an, uh, an evangelist <laughs> for Let's Fic, if anything. That's important. Where can people find you online if they want to connect with you? So the places I'm most active are Twitter and Instagram. So I'm Dana Pickley, that's two C's, one L, uh, both places. And uh, you can also find me at Dana Pickley Author on Facebook. I have to admit, I um, that's a fairly new thing for me. I <laughs> I have a personal Facebook, but I've I've lived on Twitter for the last seven years or so, and so that's where that's where I have uh, my main thought process. I'm trying to I'm trying to be everywhere, so anyone who maybe isn't into those things can find me in a place that they feel most comfortable. And I'll, I also have a website, DanaPickley.com, so you can see my work at things like Clexicon and New York Comic Con where I moderate panels and do interviews and I'm actually gearing up right now and who knows this this might air when I'm at Clexicon who knows <laughs> but uh, that's a very cool and exciting thing and I don't know if you know this Tara but there's going to be a bunch of lesbic authors at Clexicon this year there's uh, I think there's like two panels or something all about lesbic 
I did. I heard about it. Well, I will definitely be at uh, at the Lesvik panels if I am not already on stage moderating a different panel because I'm really excited to see what folks have to say. And I know um, a couple of the Bella writers are going to be there. I know some Bold Strokes folks. So looking forward to it. That is fantastic. So if you are at Clexicon, go say hi to Dana. If yes. You, see her. <laughs> you will not miss me. I have very pink hair. Well, that is all for this episode. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. I'm Tara, and you've been listening to Let's Do Books. Remember to email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with your questions or comments. If you're an author who's interested in joining me on the show to talk about the lesfic you love or trends that have you interested, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this episode, please check out the show notes where you'll find a Patreon link for The Lesbian Talk Show or visit patreon.com slash thelesbiantalkshow. Patrons get exclusive content like bonus podcasts that no one else gets access to. You can also join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club, to talk about these books and anything else you're reading and loving. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or Spotify. 